And another good morning to you and a welcome to the Way of Meditation service. And I love the title, The Way of Meditation. It's an indication that this is not a one It is not an every now and then. It's a way of life. We build it into our way of life into, until our way of life is surrounding our practice of meditation and other devotional practices, prayer and study and fellowship. In other words, in the beginning of your walk, as, as people has discovered in my meditation class on Tuesday nights, in the beginning you're seeking to fit your meditation practice into your busy life. You're trying to eke out 10 minutes here, 5 minutes there, 20 minutes there. But then after a while something begins to happen. You begin to realize that as you're making contact on a regular basis with the source of all creation, and that deep sense of luminosity begins to be active within you, you can't bear to live without that. And so instead of seeking to fit it into your life, your life surrounds it. It's a part of your daily activity. We've talked about the fact of the benefits of it, but besides the, the physical benefits of it, of which we've had testimonies past couple of weeks in the class, you begin to live life from a levitational point of view, not merely floating physically off the ground, but you're a little bit above the fray of the human experience, that you're able to differentiate between the thought forms moving through the world and moving through society, people being caught up in emotional contagion. You're able to see all of that going on, but you're a little bit above it not better than anyone in any shape or form, but you're not caught up in the sway of the thought forms of fear and doubt and worry emanating from a sense of separation. Instead, your witness capacity has expanded. You can see it, but you're not of it. What are you of? You're of you are of the insights that are occurring in your practice of meditation. An insight, of course, is an, an event that takes place in consciousness where you suddenly or incrementally become aware of something you previously only believed. But that belief led you into practice so that you could have the insight around your belief. So you're no longer a believer. You know something. You don't merely believe that two plus two is four but somewhere within you, you caught an insight about why that is true, you don't think about it. You're not walking around trying to prove two plus two is four, proselytize people into it. You just do your math and live your life. In the same way, as you're having insight and revelation into your oneness with the presence of God and everyone's oneness in the power and the presence and the love of God, whether it's active or not, you don't walk around trying to prove it. You're not knocking on doors trying to tell people about it. You're, not, you're living your life and allowing your light to so shine before humanity that when they see you, feel you, hear about you, they're seeing and feeling and hearing about a presence that is never an absence. Ineffable, can't be touched, but real. This is why we say that the highest form of prayer is the prayer of glowing. That at some point in your practice, with insight after insight after insight, integration, 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 embodiment, 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 there's a subtle glow about you, a sense of peace, which is a dimension of the fruits of the spirit that passes human understanding. So when Yeshua ben Joseph, otherwise known as Jesus the Christ, said, ye shall know them by their fruits, he was indicating that there's a certain sparkle, 
of the presence. You shall know them because of their, their sense of equanimity, their sense of peace, their, their, their sense of not all caught up in the fray of the world, yet like an acupuncture needle phew, eliminating the debris from a meridian, they're able to be in the world as an energetic vibration that clears up debris, it clears up blockages and stagnation by the mere presence of God being active in that individual. So the presence being everywhere and that each of us are not only emanations of the presence, we are also uh, the instrument through which the presence expresses. So the analogy that I, I love using, that it's so perfect, the, the electricity is everywhere, it's infinite, and then there are bulbs, light bulbs, that reveal the, 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 the presence of the electricity via luminosity. So God is everywhere. Love is everywhere. Peace is everywhere. Joy is everywhere. There's nowhere where it's not except where it's being suppressed by a limited perception. And so with electricity being everywhere and the light bulb revealing its luminosity, God is everywhere being revealed through our glowing, through our giving, through our loving through our peacekeeping, peacemaking, through our levitation being above the fray of the human dynamic. None of this is magic. It is practice. There aren't special people. There are people who specialize. There are individuals that can play the piano because they made sacred their time and practiced it. And there are individuals that are above the fray because they specialized, made sacred their time, they sacrificed. And the word sacrifice means to make sacred. That's what the word means, to make something sacred. And so they made sacred their time, practiced, specialized, so that they have insight and awareness of which transcends merely believing about it, and coming to know something in your heart of hearts. Now, practice keeps you from the, um, the pitfall, the spiritual ghetto of being a fundamentalist. A fundamentalist is an individual that is afraid that what they believe isn't true underneath. And because they have an insidious belief that what they believe is not so, they have, to, they have to get all kinds of people to be a part of it or say everyone else is an infidel or everyone else is not going to heaven, only they are, and they separate themselves. We're the, we're, we, we're the only ones. And that's a sure sign of a person that is afraid that what they believe is not so because all paths lead to the mountaintop, all paths of heart lead to the mountaintop of a great realization of our oneness with the spirit of the living God. And this is why we practice the way of meditation as a way of life, daily basis. Now, we don't believe in a new age hell, meaning if you, if you slip up for a couple of days, you don't flatulate yourself and beat yourself about it. You just begin again. And you begin again, and you begin again. And then there becomes a habit the same way I imagine that 99.9% .9 of you watching, I always got to leave a little percent there just in case, of people who shower every day or take a bath every day, brush their teeth every day, you know. And it's just integrated into your way of living. You have a social contract with society that if you're going out, you have a, a level of cleanliness. So if you put a potato chip in the dip, you're not affecting everybody with your lack of cleanliness or you're just being out. So what I'm saying 
is that we want to have a social contract about our meditation and prayer life. So we're not out here in the world just emanating all of our unresolved issues with our parents and what happened in high school and all that, all the stuff that's undealt with. We have a social contract to take care of our business in prayer and meditation, cleanliness on the inside, so we're not stinking up the joint when we go outside with bad vibes. So we're up-leveling the social contract from and including showering, bathing, brushing our teeth, etc., to inner shower, inner bath, inner cleanse. So when you go out, you're not participating in what I call the friction of fictions. That is, fictional characters that are caught up in the debris of their personality, egoic perceptions, and then you have all these egos trying to talk to each other, trying to get along. It will never happen. <laughs> it, can't, it won't happen ever, ever in existence. Look at the nation states now. We come out of the fiction of fictional characters, and we have a heart-to-heart -heart touching from the center of our being. So we practice, and we practice, and we practice. Remember, practice does not make perfect. It is the practice of perfection that makes perfect. Because many people are well too practiced in fear and doubt and worry and anxiety and projection. So we practice a sense of oneness. So that which is perfect within us gets to unfold as practice. So I thank you for being with us today, thousands of people all around the globe stopping to have a, some precious moments of coherence around the fundamental truth that we are one with the spirit of the living God. I appreciate some of the uh, testimonies that have come in saying that you use this way of meditation service on the regular. You have a moment of being a little off. You go to your YouTube or your archive at our website and you sit again with us. It's a beautiful, beautiful way of using this technology. So we stop in this moment and today we want to take our hands and put them face down on our lap as a as a sign of groundedness, embodiment, integration. So we're not seeking to be an ascended master today, we're seeking to be a descended master. That is, we're catching insight, but we are bringing the insight to earth. We're bringing the eternal and timeless into time so that we're walking on the earth and our walk on the earth is bringing heaven to earth until ultimately earth becomes heaven. A vibrational field of ever expanding good. Hmm. So the hands facing down as a sign of embodiment and integration, anchoring. You can take your tongue this morning and put it on the roof of the mouth. Just, just the tip there, and so the circulation of energy from the spine all the way up is, is a, a, a connection. Today, you just want to tap right between the space between your eyebrows, so that we're acknowledging that we can we can see without physical eyes, and we feel that where we have tapped, and we kind of place our attention there upward a little bit, simultaneously embracing our heart center, our throat center, the solar plexus, base of the spine. We just kind of know that when the eye is single, the body is full of light. We embrace our intention to wake up to our glorious nature. That is why we are sitting to wake up.
our attention is embracing our vibrational intention. And there's a simultaneous awareness that the body is breathing, which is another anchor point in present moment. with an ever-increasing awareness that there is a broadcast throughout all creation and substance saying let there be light let there be life let there be beauty let there be intelligence let there be abundance let there be God everywhere and we listen not with ears but with our whole being as if someone was telling us something so important that our whole being moves into a, a mode of receptivity. And then we add the first time factor. This is our first time ever practicing the art and the science of meditation. We're not trying to replicate anything that's ever happened. No, we sit with the beginner's mind, a childlike heart. This is our first time. And here we abide in the sacred silence. With the vibrational assist from the soak technology, assisting vibrationally to transmute the lower thought forms of anxiety and depression at the same time assisting us in expanding our awareness this is the, the sacred music that's embracing us right now it's a an assist this morning be still and know that I am God in the midst of you says, the great Lord of hosts, be still, be quiet.
mental drift has occurred, it's all right. You just become aware of it. You've gotten ensconced in thought forms and fantasies and inner conversations. It's all right. Just come back to the breath and witness all of that activity without getting involved. Without resisting it, without trying to make it go away. It has a transference effect in life. You're able to be in the world and see all manner of things going on, but you're not in it. You're not of it, I should say. And then your actions and your speech is called right speech and right action. It's emanating from the source of creation within you. So you come back to the breath and begin again. Just a few more moments. Sacred silence. Perfect stillness. Light smile on your face. It activates the tonic biochemical reaction in the body temple. Immune system is enhanced. Tonic chemicals flow through the body, endorphins, etc. Just a slight smile. Enter into a prayerful moment, leaping from our perfect stillness. We engage a high degree of thanksgiving and dynamic appreciation. We enter into the holy field of gratitude. Something within us is screaming out, I'm grateful, I'm thankful, I'm appreciative. I'm so glad I'm alive. I'm, I'm thankful that I even exist at all. And in this consciousness of gratitude, the perceptual windows are cleaned and clear and we can recognize the presence that's never an absence. Bowing at us through the trees, smiling at us through the flowers, thundering through the very earth. Oh, the presence of God is everywhere. 
Not a man in the sky, but a presence that is never an absence. John said, God is love. Jesus the Christ said, God is spirit. We must worship God in spirit and in truth. The Bhagavad Gita reminds us that fire burns it not, water wets it not, wind blows it not away. And when you, you find it, you can't name it. And when you name it, you can't find it. God is everywhere. In this moment of pure recognition, that which is everywhere is within us. We are within it. Our life is it. And the word spoken from this dynamic is a word of authority, not conjecture, not merely belief. The vibrational frequency of wholeness, I speak it for each and every one of us today. knowing that we are transcending our personal mind and biases and small perceptions of life and seeing life as it really is, presence everywhere. The word is spoken for our divine health, the vitality and the vigor, the wellness, the well-being, the strength, the flexibility, the absolute ability to be immune to anything that would hinder or block our good. Our body can heal anything with the right heart and mindset. So it is in this awareness that the word is spoken for divine and compelling right action to take place in every area in our life and anything that would hinder or delay, deny the fullness of life from moving through us has no power here. For there's only one power, and that's the power of God, and we're free. Let's accept our triumphant nature right now. We are free in the spirit. And we, oh, we give thanks for this. We feel good about it. We inwardly celebrate it. And we allow it to be as it is. Therefore, we can say, and so it is, even now, now so be it. Amen. Ashe. Amen. And so as you slowly open your eyes and remain with us, this is our opportunity to practice the law of circulation and support this community, otherwise known as Agape International, not backed by any corporate conglomerates, not pulled by any other's agenda, except for the presence of God saying, set me free through you. And so everything obviously is on a donation, love offering, tithing, a gifting basis. This is your opportunity to participate in strengthening this particular instrumentality known as Agape International with all of its ministries and programs and projects, evolutionary collaboration, staff, equipment, etc. So flex your giving muscles. You stop for just a second and we give thanks for this particular process of being receptive to receive and to give simultaneously that a burst of enthusiastic abundance takes over and all needs met becomes the activity of our individual and collective consciousness. And it's happening now and so it is. So veterans, thank you so much for your generosity and the way that you have supported Agape, particularly during these last couple of years when people were on edge as to what's going to happen next. You really st uh, 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 stood up and supported your community. Absolutely appreciate that. We must continue. And if you're a veteran, you already know how to give. Go ahead and start your giving process now. For those of you who are just beginning stretching your, your prosperity muscles, you can text to give, text to donate. 
three two. What is the number here? Yeah, four two four three two one sixty two forty three. It's on the screen here. Take your phone, text to that number three two four two four three two one sixty two forty three. Text the word give. Your phone will prompt you. You follow the prompt. You choose the amount and the regularity of the gifting. If you'd like to mail in your donations, you can mail it into 8549 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1156, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. Is that what it is? Yes, it is. Just keep checking this morning. And uh, mail it in. comes in right on time. It's always on time. We appreciate it. We don't call it snail mail. We call it right on time mail. And then if you want to go to our website, agapelive.com. I'm speaking to you YouTubers. Perhaps you want to go to our website at agapelive.com. It's a banner up at the top. It'll ultimately say where you can donate. Just follow the prompts. Make your gift. If you're on a Facebook page, my Facebook page or Agape's Facebook page, there's a donation button there. So appreciate you in advance, the gift and the giver. God bless you. Reverend Julie. Good morning. We've got so much going on here at Agape. Uh, take a listen. There is something perfect here for you, so let's find out what it is. To sign up and get more information about any of the items mentioned, visit agapelive.com and all times listed are Pacific Standard Time. The Agape International and Global Choirs are open for auditions. Paul, do you have that video? Doesn't that look like so much fun? No matter where you are in the world, you can now participate in Agape Music. It's time to come together and sing. Auditions continue through February 28th. If you are a singer interested in sharing your voice, building community, and experiencing the great joy of participating in the music of Agape, visit agapelive.com forward slash global choir to get the details. Both choirs um, are available to participate in. You can upload your audition video today. Valentine's Day offer from Soak. Soak elevates your mental, emotional, and physical states and shifts you into the vibrational alignment by using the Soak Sound Frequency Therapy. It's it's a healing protocol that pairs positive affirmations with specific sound frequencies to provide energetic cellular alignment. It's the music that was playing while Rev. Michael was doing meditation. The SOAK protocol is clinically proven to improve your health, boost your mood, help you sleep, and reduce anxiety and depression. For Valentine's Day, you can sign up for the premium access package, and when you put in the code AGAPE75, you will receive 70% off your first month's access. So that's seven dollars and fifty cents for the first month. Go to soak s o a a k dot com. Click on the premium membership and enter Agape seventy five. Today, Teen Agape meets online at 11.15 a.m. Click the Teen Agape banner on our website. Preteens ages 9 to 13 meet at 2 o'clock. Children ages 3 to 8 meet at 3.30. Both are live on Zoom. To join and get your Agape Youth Fun Packs, email revleon at agapelive.com. Today, One from the Heart is offering our online bereavement support group for those who have experienced the physical loss of a human loved one. It meets at 2 o'clock via Zoom. In addition, today at 4, we offer our our animal bereavement support group for the loss of an animal companion. You can register on our website by clicking the appropriate bereavement support banner. The Crisis Support Clinic offers Zoom mini counseling sessions every Monday from 4 to 6 p.m. To receive details for your first come, first serve, complimentary one-on-one -on -one session with a licensed practitioner, email crisissupport at agapelive.com. This is offered to the community at large, so anyone at all can attend. It's a beautiful gift. Monday through Saturday, we're going to see you on Facebook Live, 8 a.m. prayer, 12 noon meditation. Agape Spiritual Community Gathering meets Fridays at 5.30 p.m. and connect in community with an enriching, inspiring gathering led by our practitioners and ministers. You can email scg at agapelive.com to get more information. 
And finally for today, save the date, The Power of Prayer, Learn to Pray the Agape Way. It's a six-week prayer class led by Reverend Carlton with weekly special guests that include Reverend Michael. This begins on February 22nd, so keep an eye out for more information. Many blessings to you. Thank you, Reverend Julie. Hmm. Take a breath. Let's give thanks for all of the power and presence and love that's flowing through us in this moment. We get, let us give thanks that we're living in the field of abundance and that abundance is revealing itself through our generosity this morning and that this sacred center lives in the overflow of so much good that the capacity to serve even more is increased. We give thanks for this and allow it to be so. And so it is. Amen. So, on the, 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 the six-week prayer class, that's going to be so, so powerful. The actual date is March 22nd, not February. I think that was a misprint, not Reverend Julie's fault. <laughs> it's March 22nd, so uh, put that on your calendar. You want to be in this class. It's going to be extremely powerful. And as Reverend Julie mentioned, uh, the, the SOAK individuals are giving people connected to agape, this particular um, entry level, $7.50 for the a full month of the premium package, which includes everything. So just go to uh, SOAAK.com, register, make sure you, when you're checking out, you put in Agape 75 and you get all of it for $7.50. Okay, so you get the ch a whole month to check it out. Let's listen to this. <laughs> Listen to Charles Holt sing a Beckwith, McAfee, Lewis song. I'm tired of the guilt. We're through with guilt. That brings me pain. Now is the time for me to let go of the shame. The past behind me, I see anew. I'm ready for my change. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for my change. And knowing that all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. I forgive. We hear ourselves me. saying, I forgive me. I forgive. For any misperceptions, any limiting point of view. Everything that I've been holding. Everything that I've been holding on to. I now let go. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I'm ready. I'm ready for, I'm ready for my, change, my change, my transformation, my unfoldment, next great vision and version I'm of myself. Ready I'm ready. Feel it today. I forgive. We stand in the awareness that we're letting go of anything that would hinder, delay, block, or obstruct the fullness of life moving through us. We stand in our triumphant nature, which is the power and the presence and the love of God, the intelligence flowing through us today, each and every way, and anchoring the realm of ever-expanding good on earth as it is in the heart mind of the infinite it's happening now it's happening now it's happening now it's happening right now and we allow it to be so and so it is amen peace and radical blessings for many of you will see you at 8 30 meditation and a nine o'clock worship celebration service or 11 a.m. meditation and 11.30 worship celebration service at Pacific Standard Time.